Welcome to our lecture online and here's an additional problem, an additional example of how to find the magnetic field with moving charges. Now, if you look at this, you recognize this was the end where we ended up with our previous example, but what I'm adding to it now is at the same time that we have an alpha particle moving to the right, we have an electron moving to the left and assume that at this very moment the two particles pass one another. At the very moment that they're at the same location, what is now the magnetic field in this direction. So now it's going to be an addition, a vector addition of the magnetic field caused by the alpha particle and the magnetic field caused by the electron moving in the opposite direction. So since we already found the, mag the direction and the magnitude of the magnetic field caused by the alpha particle, let's now find the direction and the magnitude of the magnetic field caused by the electron moving in the opposite direction. Since it's a negatively charged particle, to find the direction we use our left hand instead of the right hand you point the thumb in the direction of the motion of the particle, which is this way, and then the, your fingers will curl in the direction of the magnetic field. And notice that over here, the field will also be out of the board, same direction as the direction caused by the alpha particle. So even though the electrons move in the opposite direction, since it's negative, that kind of negates that, and you still have an additional amount of B field coming out of the the board caused by the electron. What about the magnitude of that B field? Well, it turns out that we use the very same equation. The B field is equal to 4 pi. Oh, not 4 pi, it's mu sub naught divided by 4 pi. So mu sub naught divided by 4 pi times the charge of that particle times the velocity of that particle multiplied or crossed with the unit vector pointing in that direction divided by the magnitude of the unit vector squared. So now you will notice that just about everything is the same as before. So this is equal to 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 tesla meters per amps multiply times a single charge. Now you don't care if it's a positive or a negative charge because we already took care of the magnitude. So we're simply finding the magnitude of that, of that quantity. So oh, let me indicate here that we're just simply finding the magnitude and therefore we don't care about the sign. Now, if we weren't finding the magnitude in this, in this way and we had to find it that way, we do indeed have to keep the negative sign there. But in this case, we have a single 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 Coulomb charge. So we don't care about the negative. The velocity here would be 5,000 meters per second. Again, we know that it's to the left, but we don't care about that because we're simply finding the magnitude, 5,000 meters per second times the magnitude of the unit vector and don't forget then we have to multiply that times the sine of the angle the sine of 45 degrees and the whole thing divided by 4 pi 4 pi that's right the 4 pi from there and the distance which still would be 10 centimeters or 0 0.1 meter quantity squared and so that means that we'll end up with half the value of this right there so we take that value divided by 2 and so this is equal to 0 0.566 times 10 to the minus 20 teslas all right and so then the total magnetic field and I'll use the red for that so the magnitude b total is simply equal to the B field caused by the, um, by the alpha particle. So the B field caused by the alpha particle plus the B field caused by the electron. So we're simply adding these together. Since they're pointing in the same direction, we can simply add. And the result then is, this is equal to 1.13 times 10 to the minus 20 teslas plus 0. Point, just, let's round it off to two significant figures. 5, 7 times 10 to the minus 20 teslas. So when we add the two together, that gives us, that gives us 1.70 times 10 to the minus 20 teslas. So notice that if the magnetic field is caused by multiple particles, we do have to do a vector addition at that location. So we look at the magnetic field contribution of each moving particle if it's a positive particle for direction, use your right hand. If it's a negative particle for direction, use your left hand. And then you simply add the magnitudes of the vectors. All right. Now, on to the next topic, which would be 
finding the magnetic field caused by a line segment. Of course, that line segment is going to be carrying current.